Righto, developing picking speed. Uh, it's all about the right hand. I see so many videos and you know drills and they're all really great. Focusing on the left hand for building speed, a bit of hand synchrony stuff is great too, but the right hand is our tool. So I just wanna talk about a couple of things today. It's gonna to be some hand synchrony stuff as well, but we're gonna focus on uh, your right hand, what it's doing and a couple of little adaptations to uh, really clean it up. Control always comes before speed, yeah. So if you can do something slow, um, really clear and you know really accurately, then you can start speeding it up from there. So uh, I'm just gonna take a really basic chromatic exercise. Yeah, it's not a true chromatic scale, but uh, just going down the frets, using all my fingers. Everyone's already seen this one before. So on, um, really slow metronome, right? I'm gonna start at 80 beats per minute. So I'm gonna play crotchets. I do it all, alternate picking. All the way down and back up. Once you can do that, then go to your quavers, so two per beat. Triplets. Semi quavers. So on. Now, most people will stop there if they do something like this, but I'd encourage you to get further. Don't increase your metronome speed yet, but increase your rhythmic subdivision, which is what we're doing. So groups of five is really important. It's really odd, yeah? So it's getting that. Wait for this to come back around. Yeah, really important grouping too that everyone misses. Make sure you've got no tension in that upper shoulder, forearm area. Your wrist should be the only thing that's picking. Um, and then let's do sex tablets, group of six, yeah? Wait for this to come around. Everything should look the same, no matter what rhythm I'm doing. Once you can get up to about there, I mean, you could go further, you go up to your sevens and your eights, go as far as you want to go, but once you can get up to that spot at a certain speed, that's when you increase your metronome. So I'm gonna go up by uh, 10. I'd recommend going up by fives. Um, just for when you're practicing this, and go all the way back. Do your crotchets, go all the way back up. When you can find a speed that you max out at, so let's say we're going up to sixes, right? Or even semi quaver let's just do up to fours for a second. And let's say I max out at a certain speed, I'm just gonna go up to say 160 with the metronome, so like. I'm still okay there, but let's say it was just a little bit too fast, right? Like just pretend I couldn't get it. I'm just that little bit behind, I can't get there. So even though you're that little bit behind, it's like progressive overload, you know, like if you're lifting a weight and try and lift heavier, you can't do as many reps, but after a certain amount of times, then um, build the muscle and you can, it's the same thing. Don't go under and stay at that tempo. So say I, could, I couldn't do 160, but I could do 150, right? So I'll do 150. That's fine. And then let's pretend when I go up to 160, it's just past that breaking point. Just behind it, yeah? It's actually really hard to play behind on purpose. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so even though it's behind, play at 160 and catch up. Now, what this is training you to do is your right hand and your ears are starting to, they're in a separate plane and they're starting to come together and your ears going, okay, I'm behind, I can hear where I'm behind and your right hand's got to struggle to catch up. Uh, once you can hear that, even though you're playing behind, <clears throat> go back a little bit, go to 155, yeah? So... And after a while, by going up by twos, even one beats per minute every, say, minute or so, you'll find that this will creep up really quickly. So you might go past 160 straight away and get up to 180 or something, yeah? Um, I'll give you an example, right? So if I speed this right up, let me just see where this goes to. Let's go to 200, so, right? So semi quavers. See, I can get it but I don't feel like that's clean enough. So I'll give you a perfect example. So let me go back to 190. Okay, I feel all right there, yeah? Go back to 200, let's check. That was better, but I can still feel a bit of tension. So, okay, 190. So let's go 191. Yeah, better. It's all right. And then what I'm gonna do is do a jump. So let's go up to say 198, yeah? So this might be too quick. Cool, I'm pretty all right now. 
up to 200, and what I'll actually do is get past 200, even if this is too fast for me. So yeah, I don't feel like that's quite clean enough, yeah? Bit better towards the end. But now I've gone to 205, I should be able to come back to 200 and it should feel okay. Ready? Not too bad. So this is that method of uh, progressive overload, yeah? Just slowly increasing and then actually going past what your goal is for that period of time. And then because you're really straining yourself and going faster than what you're actually trying to hit, you come back to your target and it feels easier, right? It feels easier for your body. Um, that was just a quick example. I'd spend much more time on each one just to get it up to scratch. And this is great to do as a warm up, yeah? So I'm playing cold at the moment. So it feels tricky at the start, but after I warm up a little bit too, that speed will increase. So that's a really, really good way to start improving, improving your picking speed. Um, and the other way too is through scales, yeah? So let's say we just take a standard three note per string major scale, right? So, you know. Now, exactly the same concept. I'll just leave the metronome off for a second so it's not too annoying. But I'd keep the metronome really slow, so 80 beats. Now you see a lot of this, you see a lot of like, okay, let's do quavers and they sweep the left hand up. Triplets, semi quavers. That's all well and good, but what we're gonna do is actually do the right hand. So the left hand is gonna maintain that. So if we go crotches. Now let's go quavers, but we're gonna right hand it and it means double pick each note. Triplets. Lydian. Semi quavers. It's a five. Sixes. And what I'm actually doing in the camera there, I'm watching myself. I'm watching that hand of mine. Just making sure that when I go up to sixes, it looks the same as when I'm doing quavers. See that? I shouldn't get quavers and then sixes look like this and I can feel the tense. Um, you just want to be nice and loose and relax the whole time. So yeah, really good skill that one. Um, and the other thing too is I see a lot of videos doing whole scales like that, but mainly when you're alternate picking, especially when you're alternate picking across strings, the drama and the problem that gets caused is between adjacent strings. It's the string crossing. Um, so working the crossing itself is really important and doing little speed bursts is great as well. I'm gonna run those two things and then um, I'll wrap this up, yeah? So let's take, uh, let's just take two strings from that major scale. I'm just gonna take, say, the D and the G, right? So in that A major uh, scale, then we're gonna have from here, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E, and that's six, seven, nine, six, seven, nine. I'm just picking an easy shape, you know, it's, um, symmetrical on both strings. So I'm just gonna play this. So six, seven, nine, do the one on the next string and back. I'm gonna practice that crossing, but I'm gonna do it with a speed burst, right? So I'm gonna go. Yeah, that's a slow one. If I go like quite dramatic. Now by doing this, um, <clears throat> obviously the slow one's nice and easy, but I'll be able to tell and pinpoint exactly where the drama or the tension is coming from when I do that speed burst. See, I wasn't happy with that. That was a bit, a bit messy. That was better. And then, once you get that, start bringing that speed up, but also doubling those bursts if I go. That's good. I can hear a little bit of a muting issue where I was holding that uh, D string with the pinky just a little long. I wasn't getting that seesaw, so I can fix up all those little problems. And this is just, you know, it's so, um, what should I say? What am I trying to say? Exponential growth, you know what I mean? Like it's just ridiculous how much cleaner you can get these runs and in turn, how much faster you can get them, but clarity is always, you know, more important. Um, so yeah, the speed bursts are really good. And just getting those crossings, yeah? So just doing this. <laughs> Leaving longer in between, going, okay, I can do that. Get the crossing. Then start adding the best, the, the rest of the um, little thing coming down. 
So it's not always practicing the whole scale run, it's practicing the transition points that are most important. And I mean, that concept goes all the way back to, you know, simple stuff like when you're first learning you're putting chords together. You think, you know, like, play a C chord easy, you can play a G chord easy, but some people with the transition, they find it really hard, you gotta take time to set it up. So it's always practicing the transition points. Um, and it's the same thing for picking speed and scales and right hand and solos and whatever. So uh, yeah, I hope this helps a little bit. Really use that technique with the metronome where you keep the metronome nice and slow and you go through your rhythmic subdivisions, you know, crotchets, quavers, triplets, semis, all the way through. Um, and then yeah, once you can do it at that point, then just bump that metronome up by five. If you feel like you can't quite get it at that new speed, don't go under it again, go over it, yeah? And then when you come back to the speed you couldn't get before, you should feel a little bit uh, a little bit easier on it. So um, yeah, it's just a method that I've used for a long time. I teach a lot of students it and good results, good practical results. So um, yeah, I thought I'd share. But yeah, thanks guys. Um, like, comment, subscribe, please. Pretty fresh channel, helps me out. And um, of course, any suggestions, video suggestions, tips, tricks, questions, just chuck them in the comments below and um, I'll get around to them. But yeah, thanks very much.